Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have another interesting episode for you guys that I think a lot of you uh, are going to enjoy. So make sure you stick around for this one. Now, <laughs> these playoffs have been nothing, nothing like I expected. Y'all know, some of y'all know, for those of you who saw it, we actually did a playoff preview. We did a live. We don't do as many as we used to, but we did a live. And me, I'm like, okay, let me get my predictions, right? And since I gave those predictions, I well, actually, going into the playoffs, I actually had the Denver Nuggets beating the Golden State Warriors. As we speak, the Denver Nuggets are actually down 0-3. I had the Suns beating the Pelicans, and although that they are, although they are, I think they lost, what is it, Devin Booker, I think in game one or game two, if I'm not mistaken, I think to a hamstring pull. I think it was in game two, if I'm not mistaken. They're down uh what is it i think they're down 2-1 then i had the utah jazz beating the dallas mavericks and as we currently speak they're down two game i mean they're down 2-1 and luke and luca hasn't even played a single game so that so i was wrong about that i had the toronto raptors actually upsetting the philadelphia 76ers because i didn't trust james harden to show up in the playoffs and i didn't trust the coaching doc rivers and as i currently speak i'm sitting here eating my words they are actually down, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're down 3-0. Um, I think, yeah, I think they're down 3-0 and they're about to get swept. They are in the process of actually being swept. Um, so I was wrong about that. And I had the Celtics uh beating the Brooklyn Nets in seven games. And as we currently speak, they are down 2-0. But what I couldn't predict was the reasons that the Brooklyn Nets will be down 0-2 against the Boston Celtics. In the first two games of this series, Kevin Durant has been a shell of himself. He has been a total disaster. And it's something that has shocked the entire NBA world. Given the reputation of Kevin Durant as one of the best scorers of his generation, I was listening to a segment on uh, what is it? Speak for your no, yeah, speak for yourself with Emmanuel Watcher. And Emmanuel Watcher said that um, he's the best score of this generation, and he defined a generation by uh, you know a time span of ten years. So that's what he said. And to have Kevin Durant, you know, be one of the most lauded scores of all time. Some people say he may go down as being one of the best scores, you know, to be one of the greatest scores of all time. F for us to see how much. He is struggling. I mean, struggling against this Boston Celtics defense is actually jarring. Those guys have put Kevin Durant in a straitjacket. This guy has been under, under a tremendous amount of duress. Those Boston Celtics are playing suffocating defense on Kevin Durant. And his numbers in the first round are unlike anything any of us would have expected from KD. Let me just quickly read off Kevin Durant's stat line to you guys in the first round. Just let's listen. To, it's only two games, but it's still the first round. He is scoring 20, uh, 25 points per game. So if you just saw that, you'd be like, okay, but he's, he's doing all right. He's scoring 25 points per game, right? In 41 and, and 41 and a half minutes. But here's the issue. Kevin Durant, think about this. Kevin Durant is shooting... 31.7% from the field. 31. A guy that's been a part of the, or that's a part of the 50, 40, 90 club, shooting 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and 90% from the free throw line, is shooting 31.7% from the field. He's shooting 28.6% from the three. He's averaging four rebounds. Somebody that's basically seven feet tall is averaging four rebounds, four assists. And get this, Kevin Durant is averaging six turnovers. So not only are they causing him to shoot an abysmal percentage from the floor, whenever they make him a passer, he turns the ball over at a rate that is alarming. His turnover to assist ratio is crazy. And we're talking about Kevin freaking Durant. It's unlike anything that we've seen before. Now, if you look at Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's on the other side of the bracket, 
he's there playing against a very good, uh, what is it, Chicago Bulls team. And I think they lost Chris Middleton in game two. They lost game two. And right now, as we speak, the Milwaukee Bucks are up 2-1 against the Chicago Bulls. And they went into Chicago and, and put a beat down on them. They put a beat down on them. Listen, if Kevin Durant loses this series, it's one thing. But if he loses this series and plays the way that he's, that he's been continu continuing to play, and if Giannis Antetokounmpo still somehow finds a way to continue to help his team advance past the Chicago Bulls and somehow make it back to the NBA Finals, I think Giannis will overtake Kevin Durant when it comes to the all-time standings for one very simple reason. It will be another instance in which Giannis Antetokounmpo rose to the challenge and led his team as the number one option to the finals. Let me tell you something. Giannis, what we don't discuss enough about this guy is his leadership. Let's think about this for a second. We don't even talk about Giannis's leadership. We just talk about his exploits in terms of his accomplishments, you know, what he did in the NBA Finals, his commitment to the game. But we don't talk about his leadership. Have y'all noticed, I think in the nine or ten seasons that Giannis Antetokounmpo has been in the NBA, have you heard any drama to come out of Milwaukee? Have you heard of any instances where there's been clashes in the locker room between Giannis and his teammate? Or his Have y'all heard any of that? Have you heard any former Milwaukee Buck player say, oh, you know, man, playing with Giannis, he can be a ball hog. He can be this. He can be that. He can... Have y'all heard anything about it? About, uh, you know, anything of the sort? We've heard nothing. Giannis has been an exceptional leader. He's failed. He's gotten better. He's improved. And he's just been consistent. Whereas KD, on the other hand, everyone has been questioning his leadership, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, his leadership abilities, especially when it comes, uh, especially in terms of decision making. I think KD is a good basketball player in terms of a leader on the court. But whenever you talk about his decision making and his ability to relate to other players and really get in people's faces, it's something that a lot of people question. There are a lot of people out there that feel as if a superior player on that Brooklyn Nets team is actually the one leading Kevin Durant and Kyrie. Kyrie Irving is, superior, is a, is a superior, superior basketball player to Kevin Durant. And there are a lot of people that feel as if Kevin Durant is, a lot of decisions that he's making or made are influenced by Kyrie Irving. But how can that be the case? When KD's clearly the franchise player, he's clearly the best player, and he should be the leader. So there are a lot of question marks. And if KD loses... It's going to dredge up this conversation of, you know, did he make a mistake leaving Stephen Curry to go play with Kyrie Irving? That's going to be one conversation. Another conversation is, could KD ever be the man? Can he ever be the man on a team that leads his team to an NBA championship? One thing you cannot say about LeBron is that he never was the man. To let, he led that Cleveland Cavaliers team to a championship. Can't say that, about, say that about Kawhi. He led the Toronto Raptors to a championship. Whether you guys believe it or not. When, when next the, the Toronto Raptors are going to win the championship, y'all let me know. Last time I checked, Kawhi was the guy that did it. He had one of the greatest runs in NBA history. Had the second most or um, third most scoring points behind Michael Jordan and LeBron James in the NBA playoffs. Uh, he led the playoffs in points, rebounds, and steals. That was Kawhi. Whether you hate us, like it or not, it happened. You think of Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo just led the Milwaukee Bucks to a championship, and he was the man and delivered one of the greatest uh, you know, closeout game performances in the history of the sport. Right? You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find another performance like that. And then you have Kevin Durant. Yes, he is a two times finals MVP. Yes, he was the best player on the uh, what is it, on the Golden State Warriors when they were winning those two back to back championship. Yes, he was the man in the finals. He was the finals MVP. But KD has yet to lead a team on his own to a finals and let alone win one. And if he fails in the first round, it's going to bring up all of those questions. And I don't think it's going to be even a question of whether or not Giannis Antetokounmpo should be ranked higher than KD all time. He should. If KD fails and Giannis continues to excel, I think it's going to happen. So these are my thoughts and opinions. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section uh, below. And we'll definitely catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.